group today today is hopefully an opportunity now we're out in the desert mountains of west texas right now in an extremely remote canyon uh, we're near the termination of it over here to my left I'll show you that in just a moment is one of the last pools it's been kind of a dry year we were here a few weeks ago it's gone down several foot since it's got life inside of it and uh, we've seen quite a few catfish it's not a very large pool and the hope is that if i get in there with just my bare hands i can get a few uh, noodle them tickle them whatever you want to call it and get a meal out of it so we're gonna go ahead dress up for this boots come off i think the dog will probably help us in his own way and we're gonna see if i can catch a catfish without pulling too many barbs or getting stuck too many times that'll be fun you ready huck good jump in the water That'll be interesting. So here in this canyon, we've spotted catfish before, but I've never, ever caught any. We've caught bluegill in here, uh, bass in here, and real grand chub, which is a pretty interesting fish. And I really have no idea how deep this thing is or what's in here. This canyon hasn't really been visited in almost five years. What do you think? For every pool that you go after with catfish, and figure out what they like. Just hoping there might be some caves. They might get up underneath their bank. Have themselves a spot or two. Somewhere that I can approach them, get them cornered, so to speak. Barring that, we'll get into the deeper water and see what we can do. Um, there is there is a level under this bank, and I imagine that's where most of them are staying. We'll also check underneath this rock. There's a tendency for it to cavitate up underneath. They might like that as well, because most days it is blazing hot down here. Kind of an anomaly today. On those hot days, you want to be as far down deep in the water as possible to stay cool. Yeah, there's a definite underbank right here. You can help. Hmm? a bit of an understatement when I said there was it was a uh, cleft under the bank I can sink my shoulders all the way and my arms all the way up to the shoulder Thank 
got the shallow spots and the deep spots. I'm gonna move back into the deep areas, let the fish get adjusted to my presence, and see what I can do without bringing a few of them out. Hard one. There you go. <laughs> There's my prize. A little catfish out in the desert, out in the mountains. That is my first ever Davis Mountains catfish. I don't want to lose him. I don't want to lose him. All right. Whew. But this guy is actually in luck. Now, legally, I'm not allowed to keep anything under 12 inches long. And if this was a survival situation, that would be a different story. But lock him in. Oh, don't stick me. Don't stick me, don't stick me. He wants to. I'm going to let him breathe some more. All right. What I'm going to do, this pool will go dry here in just a bit, within a few weeks, if we don't get any rain. There's a pool about 100 yards over that never goes dry. It'll get low, but it's a Tanaha. And what I'm gonna do with this guy, even though he's not cookable, i go release him over there. Yep, yep, yep. Lucky day. I'd be much happier here and live longer. Let's go, Huck. Come on, bud. First one took at least 15 minutes. Go ahead and double down. Let's talk about how I was able to get him. Kind of the technique that I built up, at least for this pool. And uh, begin to reinforce why we always come prepared and why we want to learn how to build fish traps and things that make it where we don't have to do this actively. water still turned up but I really haven't disturbed it as I had a bit earlier. Now the technique that I came up with 
and these vary from pool to pool and fish to fish. Things like trout and tickle their bellies, throw them up on bank. But these, several times, allowed me to put my hands over them and they would scoot on out. And so what I would do is put my hands over the main body and I was able to shove that one in the mud and that worked pretty well. So everyone's different. You just gotta have to try different things out and figure it out. Also, I had tried staying in the main, main pool deep down to see if the fish would eventually come back to me. And they did not. Uh, they stayed away. They could sense me. It wasn't a viable way of doing it. What I found out I could do is just kind of go from section to section to section. So down here in the deep, I would move up here into the shallow, find several of them there. I have my a couple attempts, and then I would push them over this way, and up underneath this bank, they would all congregate under there. And so going back and forth, kept on having hunting grounds, kept on rotating, pushing the fish, getting more opportunities to catch one. Keep on moving. These seem to be schooling together for the most part. Heck yeah. Got him. Oh, he got me a little bit too. Here we go. Fish number two. And that only took four minutes. He does have a spine in my hand a bit. Let's see if we can't show him off. He's a bit smaller. He'll do. Here we go. Pretty awesome. All right. So, yeah. Technique. Muscle memory. Getting back in the hang of it. You can get better and better at this. Personally, guys, if you're fans of the channel, you watch a lot of my stuff. Ooh. You know that I make a lot of traps. I'm all about doing things passively. Expending energy, putting myself inside of water, especially stagnant water, places like leeches, um, parasites, things that can really, really ruin your day, your week, your year. In certain situations, your life, I try and stay out. But uh, pretty awesome. Hand fishing is what it's about. I'm gonna go ahead and take this guy over release him as well and then I'll show you what I've got inside my goodie bag awesome little cat oh and he's sharp 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 beautiful cat Lazy dog. See what I got? Look at the catfish. Look about the fishing. show and tell once I get my socks and shoes back on. It's a messy business. Right. 
true locate just some place that has a little more sunlight. Let's go, bud. Come on. something old and something very new now for those of you that have followed this channel new and old subscribers this is the Bob Hanser signature series survival card this is made by Grim Workshop if you haven't bought one of these yet you should go ahead and check out the link in the description down below it's pretty awesome and one dollar from every one of these things sold goes to making sure that this area back here we'll talk about this in just a moment is open and free to those that need to learn about this kind of stuff. Now this right here, this was sent through snail mail and came to me out here in this remote area just about a month ago. And uh, they have not released a lot of what you're gonna see in this yet, or uh, as of the posting of this video. But this is the Grim Fishing Set, all right? Go ahead and open it up. Most of this I understand. Some I haven't really got to tinker with yet, but I'm excited. All right, pretty cool tin. Slips on and off. It's been riding around in the saddlebags for several weeks. First off, Grim Survival now has a line card. What that means, let's see about that is that inside of this card right here, a little thin card, like everything else they have, is 12 yards of fishing line. So for those of you wondering how to keep your fishing line situated, make sure that you have it on you at all times and you don't want to carry really a big EDC, just something to slip inside the wallet. That's it right there, okay? Even has a nifty little way of cutting it off. There we go. The back side. It's got a little knife. That's one. Two. This is what I'm going to be really excited to mess with here in the next couple weeks. This is a lure card. Now those are plastic. Full color. And they will spin and they will attract some really, really cool fish. So we'll be punching those out. Showing you what those are all about. Now, unlike the spoons that I have, these things have a little bit bigger holes, different colorations depending on the kind of fish you have. These will work in conjunction with a specialized hook card. So for those of you that have the fishing card, check this one out. Now you have some of the standard single hooks in there, but you'll also notice that there's some hooks that kind of look like W's or uh, double hooks, by hooks. Now what those are gonna allow you to do is pop them out and they'll swing into those lures without having to have any kind of changes, any kind of swivels, snaps, or manipulation. So like everything else Grim makes, you can pop it out, use it, catch your fish, and put it back in here. It's not a one-time use at all. Now the rest of this kit, and I'm not sure what all they're gonna put in it, but this is what mine had in it. They've got two of these, and these are hand fishing systems. All right, hand reels. So you wrap your line all the way down this, and you toss out. And then you can continue to uh, reel in and toss out, reel in and toss out, and it keeps everything in line. You can also notice that you've got some punch outs in there. All kinds of nice, real convenient stuff things you want to have out on the trail All right, here's another one this one's a lot more intricate all right that one goes a long ways punch those out got some nice handholds 
Got all kinds of handy stuff inside of there that you can use. Pretty amazing. So we're gonna give these a try out in some of the mountain streams over the course of the next couple months. Now, oh, here's something they were working on as well. Check this out. Hopefully I'm not giving y'all too much as far as, you know, spoilers of what Grimm's coming out with. But if y'all have not checked out Grimm Workshop yet, these guys are where it's at. This is not cheap metal, all right? This is not like a ready man card. This is not junk. These things punch out. You can put them back in and you can reuse them, which is fantastic. These folks are innovating. They're not just stealing people's ideas and going out there and throwing them out there for themselves. Everything they build is made in the United States. Even the metal's punched out. As far as the card size, everything's done here. So an amazing family. I really enjoy knowing them. Feel blessed to be part of their, well, part of their family. So guys, check it out, description. Check out the description down below. You'll get the link to all this. And as these become available, uh, we'll go ahead and put those links in as well. Because I'm pretty sure uh, some of these are not out just yet. But for those of you looking for stocking stuffers, that's it right there. A group enjoyed coming out here. Kind of a strange day as far as having clouds in the desert. It's been kind of nice. It's a bit cold. And I believe we got some storm clouds coming over the mountains right now. About to try and make it out of this hole. Ethically, legally, whatever y'all do out here in the wild, please make sure that these things are followed. Make sure you're following the laws. Make sure you have your licenses. Make sure that you are exercising your ethics um, wisely. Make sure everybody else can go out there and enjoy as well. Learn these things. Teach these things. Make sure that they're out there for our kids. And their kids. And their kids. That's the idea. So group, hopefully you learned something. Uh, support a scout. Please like, subscribe, comment. Tell us what you think about all this. And as always, till next time. Ready, Huck? Let's go, bud. Have a good one.